Women are resilient, compassionate, unfazed. You bleed out yourselves once a month, you're not bothered, are you? <laughs> I've seen the adverts, you're out there roller skating. <laughs> My dad has a sit down after a sandwich. <laughs> if men had periods, there'd be no activities in our ads. <laughs> so we wouldn't, we'd just be watching the telly, crying, going, it's broke. <laughs> Tampax. <laughs> Look at Jacinda Ardern. Look what she did in New Zealand. It's incredible, wasn't it? She pretty much mummed an entire nation. Well, look at me, I'm your mum, OK? We're going to lock down until the disease goes away. We're going to use mum logic. Why don't we drink bleach? Don't listen to your dad. <laughs> it's what mum's doing it. Mums are wildly overprotective, that's what they do. Remember when you were young and your mum would warn you about things you wouldn't even consider? Your mind in your own business, your mum just appears. Don't run with scissors. <laughs> Cheers, mum. <laughs> he wasn't planning on it. <laughs> Don't put a knife in a plug socket. Again. <laughs> Not on my to-do list. <laughs> This was the weirdest. Do you remember when we were eight and your mum's like, don't put two pencils up your nose and smash your head on a desk. <laughs> Thank God you're here, mum. <laughs> we were literally about to play Suicide Warrior. <laughs> it might be different in your family. Your dad might be good in a crisis. Mine's hopeless. When I was nine, and my brother and sister were seven, our rabbit twitched once. Dad killed it in front of us with a hammer. <laughs> Watch out! <laughs> I don't like watching them suffer, kids. <laughs> Even age nine, I'm like, I don't know, Dad. Probably a better way of dealing with myxomatosis than that. Maybe clear the perimeter first before you pancake flopsy, you fucking maniac. I will never forget it. My sister's crying, my brother's laughing. <laughs> my mum's like, come on, your dad's having one of his moments. Here we go. <laughs> Don't pull a face, Russell. The wind will change and you'll stay. <laughs> now, I'm going to do a joke that you're not going to like. You say that, madam. But buckle up. <laughs> I bet you money it was a dad that let those kids go around Michael Jackson's. <laughs> you know I'm right. You know I'm right. My dad would have sanctioned that. Yeah, he looks all right. Fuck it. <laughs> There's no way my mum would have allowed that. You're not going around his house. What? I'll give you two reasons. His best friend's a monkey, and there's a theme park in his garden. <laughs> Call me wacky, it smells like bait. <laughs> Besides, love, you're a mouth breather. it would be in your gob before you say Billy Jean. <laughs> Come along. What I'm trying to say, it didn't surprise me that female leaders excelled. Do you know what I find baffling? Why is it? Women are treated like morons by British newspapers. It's extraordinary. There was an art. Yeah. We had a heat wave this summer, 31 degrees. That's so hot, apparently, it made Prince Andrew sweat. <laughs> and there was an article offering women advice. Was it to use suntan lotion? Was it to wear a cap? Nope. It was not to put ice lollies up their vaginas. <laughs> now, I don't want to speak on behalf of the sisters, <laughs> but I'm guessing that's an unnecessary tip. <laughs> I've seen my grandmother in a heat wave not once. Get all your calippo, Russ. I'm burning up here, love. <laughs> I see my mum chasing an ice cream van, fanny first. Just one cornetto. <laughs> it 
was hot today. Not one woman in London tapping her tuppence with a magnum. <laughs> you wouldn't do that, because you're not mad. In the same way, if it was snowing, you wouldn't put a panini up your asshole. <laughs> do you know what I blame? Gwyneth Paltrow. <laughs> For the last five years, she's just appearing, telling you what to do with your bits. Rub it with sage. Teach you Spanish. <laughs> Put an egg up there, you'll feel more feminine. You won't. You'll feel like a chicken. <laughs> it must be exhausting, young women. All these celebrities trying to profit off your bodies, man. Do you know there's a pill doing the rounds on Instagram where you take the pill and it makes your genitals taste peachy? Now, I can't speak for the London lesbians. <laughs> But I will speak for every single man here tonight. Not once have we been lucky enough to be in that holy vicinity and gone, whoa. <laughs> I hope it's peachy. <laughs> We're trying to make you come, not get our five a day. <laughs> It's not a time for snacks. We're, <laughs> we're trying to take you to heaven and back. Which is a weird phrase when you think about it. It would be awful, wouldn't it? Like, oh, oh, granddad, and back again. You're like, oh. oh. <laughs> Don't you ever do that again, you mad bastard. I've just seen all my dead relatives and I'm a shaggy. <laughs> Vagina should taste like a vagina. <laughs> Let me repeat that. <laughs> a vagina should taste like a vagina. <laughs> and don't let celebrities make you feel otherwise. Listen, I'm not gonna say it's not an acquired taste. <laughs> Let's not muck around that first licky woo. <laughs> it's bracing. Shimmy, have it. You turn into a lava lamp. <laughs> but before you know it, you develop quite a hankering. <laughs> Initially, you're licking timidly like a deer by a river. Before you know it, like a mummy cow with a newborn calf. <laughs> the point I'm making... <laughs> taste buds evolve. You know what it's like? Nobody likes an olive when they're a kid. <laughs> this grape is bad. Before you know it, more grapes, Mum! More grapes! 